Milán. Eh, es la segunda vez que está aquí con, con nosotros en nuestro programa de maestría. Eh, el área de especialidad de él es justamente propagación. Y pues eh, él tiene un libro escrito sobre el tema de propagación y muchas publicaciones relacionadas al tema. Eh, un profesor, ya lo dije, del de Politécnico de Milán, tanto en la maestría en telecomunicaciones que tienen allá, como en doctorados y en pregrados. Eh, eh, bueno, el curso, por cierto, es, ustedes saben en inglés, él va a hablar en inglés todo el tiempo. Eh, bueno, no es un inglés anglosajón propiamente, pero un inglés más latino. Eh, es una experiencia interesante para ustedes y pues eh, seguro que como en la, en, la, en la ocasión anterior eh, los estudiantes salieron muy satisfechos y contentos con el profesor Lamico por el curso que él hizo. Así que estamos seguros que van a, van a aprovechar y quedar gustosos del curso del profesor Lamico. Gracias por estar acá nuevamente y, y es un gusto y un honor que estén nuevamente con nosotros. Gracias, Boris. Buenas tardes a todos. No hablo yo español. Comprendo. Uh, uh, si hablan muy lentamente, pero puedo hablar algunas palabras. El curso es en, en, en idioma inglés. Uh -huh. eh, mi inglés es muy latino. Uh -huh. eh, las preguntas pueden por, por, ser en, uh, en inglés o también en uh, español, si no soy un Okay, now I switch to English. Good evening, everybody. My name is Michele D'Amico, and uh, this course is wireless, will be uh, focused on wireless and mobile propagation. That's yes. worse. I want to say, please. please. Uh, excuse me. Okay. One, one last word I want to tell. Les quiero pedir un favor a todos ustedes, eh, es la primera vez que, te, que tengo la oportunidad de dirigirme a todo el grupo luego del inicio del curso. Les agradecemos que sean puntuales, que eh, las clases empiezan a las 6, 6 y 30, eh, que vengan puntuales. Eh, entiendo que la mayoría lo hace, pero hay un grupo minoritario que creo que está llegando un poco tarde. Que traten de hacer el mayor esfuerzo posible por estar aquí y pues que que adopten todas las políticas que ustedes ya conocen a nivel de pregrado, políticas que la SPOL eh, acostumbra o que tiene dentro de sus valores éticos y morales. ¿no? Porque, eh, con puntualidad, que vengan siempre a la hora que se, se, se propone, porque pues eh, eso es ¿no? Entonces, thank you again and okay. Let's So, good evening, everybody. The course, as I said, will be on wireless and mobile propagation. In a moment, I will uh, show the topics that we will tackle during this course. I will try to. Speak slowly, also because I cannot speak too much in English. It's not my native language. Uh, I would like to keep this course as interactive as possible. So please feel free to stop me at any time during my lectures. Should something not be clear, please ask questions. Uh, maybe I do mistakes or uh, I skip some information, please stop me and don't be afraid to ask questions. Because questions are uh, a good thing, because if you have doubts, maybe you are not the only one. So, uh, let's keep this, uh, this course as interactive as possible. As I said, the title is Wireless and Mobile Propagation. Before we start, uh, I'm asking you a favor. Uh, I want to build a mailing list uh, with, the, with your emails so I can distribute all the materials that I will use for the course. 
I don't usually use uh, slides because I hated slides when I was a student because professors using slides they were too fast I could not really follow so because I'm slow so I don't use slides uh, except when they are really really needed when you have very complicated graphs or very complicated things that are not easily drawn so but nevertheless we uh, I have some slides that I have to distribute so uh, please send me an email uh, so I can build this mailing list at the following email address Just an email with your, uh, I think also an empty email can do, so I can uh, get your email addresses. Uh, one thing, please, uh, for the very those very first lectures, please excuse me. I still have not uh, uh, recovered from the jet lag, so for my time, you will see now is uh, I think half past midnight, my my normal time. So. It's going to be, <laughs> I should be sleeping at this time. <laughs> so, okay. Um, the book that we will be using through this course is the following. Uh, the bad news is that we have a book, and the good news is that, don't tell anybody, I have a PDF electronic copy of the book for you. <laughs> It's not my copy, it's just there, so it's, I, give, I give it to you. The, the, the book is uh, mobile, mobile radio propagation channel. My Parsons. Wiley is the editor, and this book covers, I think, 80% of the topics that we will present, we will talk about during this course. Uh, what is left uh, is covered by other material that I will distribute to you via email. Uh, is this writing big enough, or you want me to try it bigger? Is it okay? No replies. So I assume it's okay. Okay. Uh, the exam will be at the end of the course and will be a written test. Thank you. Usually, that's the first things my students are interested to put uh, at the exam. The exam is a written test. Uh, three exercises, <coughs> numerical exercises. Uh, <coughs> we will do exercises in the due course of the course. So we, you will you will train uh, with those exercises. Uh, the good news is that you can use your books while doing the test because. This is another thing that I always believe. If you have a very short time, you have to prepare in a very short time, it's better to spend your time understanding the content of the course more than trying to memorize equation or to memorize things or write equation on small pieces of paper that then you are somewhere and try to. Yeah. So it's a uh, you can use your test, you can use your notes, everything you want. So please spend your time to uh, understand the theory of the topics that we will talk about. Okay, what shall we see <coughs> during this course? Okay, we will start 
with an introduction that is actually electromagnetic fields <coughs> basics. Really, we will not go through the electromagnetic theory because we don't really need it. Uh, you will see that propagation problems are too complex to use the standard electromagnetic theory approach. Uh, Maxwell equations are okay, but you cannot really use them in a real environment because the real environment is so complex that you don't know the boundary conditions for those equations. So we will use a different approach, but we need some uh, basic concepts uh, like uh, <coughs> what is a plane wave, electric field, magnetic field, pointing vector, this kind of things. I don't know if you have been exposed to electromagnetic theory before. Uh, if yes, you know these things. If no, just take the basic concept that you need for the course. Next thing that we, we need to talk about is antennas. <coughs> Since we are talking about uh, radio wave propagation, we need to talk about the sources of those electromagnetic waves. Again, we will not investigate how the antenna actually works. We are not interested in the, into the electromagnetics of the antenna. We will just talk about the parameters of the antenna. That is, we will uh, study antennas at system level, not at electromagnetic level. <coughs> then we start talking about <coughs> radio wave propagation itself. Uh, let me tell you that we, uh, since we're talking of mobile radio systems, mobile or portable radio system, we will focus on a very specific region of the radio spectrum. In particular, we will focus on the VHF, UHF bands. We will talk about bands in a moment. So those uh, those acronyms will be clear in a moment. What we really, what we will discuss are uh, briefly point-to-point -point systems. Then we will talk about. nomadic systems <coughs> what nomadic system and now we have to go into this terminology a nomadic system means a system that is portable it means that can be moved from one place to another but usually when you use it it is stationary, it does not move. For example, this, this PC, this laptop is a nomadic system. That is, I can use it here or I can use it somewhere else, but when I use it, unless I am on a, on a train, for example, or, or on a plane, uh, the PC is stationary. So nomadic can go around, but it does not move. Uh, what is the implication of not moving? Uh, if the, the system does not move when you use it, it means that there is, within certain limits, there is no variation with time of the channel. The channel properties are stationary, are time invariant. Obviously, the next logical step 
are mobile systems. That is, communication systems that move when you use them, like your mobile phones, for example. In this case, the channel is time varying. And on top of that, you can have also Doppler effect. It is an apparent change of the frequency of operation of the system. Oh, those, those topics up to here, from point-to-point -point system to nomadic system to mobile system, we usually talk about outdoor propagation. Propagation that is that takes place in a, a urban environment or a, a rural environment, but in any case <coughs> outdoors. But there is an important aspect of uh, for nomadic and mobile system that is indoor propagation, and we will discuss this as well because it is becoming increasingly important and in particular we have two aspects that we will tackle one is outdoor to indoor propagation that is typical for example when you use your mobile phone inside this class and the base station is outside or indoor to indoor propagation example is Wi-Fi access points that are usually inside the building and use connect from inside the building to the access point. But another important for example aspect of indoor to indoor propagation is propagation in <coughs> underground tunnels for example like the underground or uh, train tunnels. And we will see this as well. Last but not least, we shall briefly discuss noise. As you possibly know, performance of systems depends not only, or not at all, on the level of signal, but on the signal to noise ratio. So, uh, sources of noise <coughs> must be investigated as well. Uh, we will see the theory for all those things, obviously. But we will also see numerical methods. that you use to predict radio coverage. Uh, for example, ray tracing, ray launching, and all those methods that use the basics, well, some, some electromagnetic theory, but then simplify it to be able to do those kind of calculations. Okay. Uh, as I said, should you have any question, please feel, feel free to stop me. Okay, let's start now with some basic concept. Uh, please, excuse me if I say things that are already well known to you, uh, if this is the case. I can skip some parts. Uh, if something is absolutely obscure as well, please tell me so I can uh, explain it a little better. Okay. A few concepts here and what here and there. Allora, first of all, we will use
RMS values of all the quantities. Not big values. Yes. R and S means root mean square values is also called the uh, effective value of a quantity. Now I will explain it in some detail. We will always consider sinusoidal sources. And that is, we always use phasers. Uh, let me explain those two concepts. You are all familiar with this notation, I suppose, since you are all you know, you're working in telecommunication. Hmm. Oh, so this is the peak value. <coughs> okay, so if, if this is a function of time, and this is the amplitude, this value is maximum at time zero uh, peak I forgot the peak here is the peak this uh, maximum at time zero is this peak is zero and then it is like this uh, this is the peak value So P is the phase of the sinus, initial phase of the sinusoid at time zero. <coughs> and the, the duration is the period. And it's one over frequency. You know that when you calculate, you want to calculate, for example, the power. Let's imagine that this resist, that this voltage is applied to this resistance. If you want to calculate the average power. The average power as you all know. We use for this uh, <coughs> instead of the peak value, we use the RMS value. It is defined as the peak value divided by the square root of 2. So, if we want to know the power, this will be so the difference between the RMS, the root mean square, and the peak value is just a factor square 
as I said, we drop the dependence of time because we use the factor of expression. So we can uh, write this expression also as a real part about the uh, sinusoidal quantity, we will never explicitly introduce the time dependence, we will just use and this is the quantity that we will use. So, and this means that we are always considering a single frequency F for the system. Those are basic concepts, but it's uh, better to, uh, to refresh them. Questions so far at all? You are absolutely familiar with these kind of things? Those come from basic uh, and simple theory. Okay, one more thing. Talking about the introduction. We will make a, a widespread use of the DB. We will have to compare numbers that are many order of magnitude difference one from each other. It's better to use a log scale, a logarithmic scale. It's better to use the uh, In some cases, we will also use mappers. But more frequently, we will use DD. Hello, uh, so um, let me remind you that DB is a number, is a non dimensional number, and they express a ratio between two quarters. For example, and, and the definition is different when you consider voltages or currents or powers. It is important that you remember the different definitions. When we talk about voltages, currents, or since we are talking about propagation, electric field or magnetic field, the definition is of the ratio is 
20 logarithm in base 10 of the ratio. That is, for example, tension respect to a reference value. Or for example, if we're talking about the electric field, again, this is the reference. So when you, you cannot say that a voltage is 30 dB, because it makes no sense. 30 dB is the ratio between the voltage that you are considering and the reference value. I will be back on this in a moment. When you're talking about power, the definition is different because the definition, the definition is 10 logarithm in case 10 of B divided B. Or when we're talking about, and we, I, I will go back on this in a moment, about power density, this is the pointing vector, but actually it's a power density carried by an electromagnetic wave. Again, the definition is Uh, why do you have different definitions of the ratio in B? Because you can express an attenuation or an amplification in B without specifying if you are talking of voltages or powers. That is, if something attenuates 20 dB, 20 dB is the same quantity if you express this in this in voltages or in power because power is proportional to the square and when you, when you go to the log scale this factor 2 here is a multiplying factor so that's why you have 20 because you can rewrite this equation as 10 you move this factor 2 to the exponent and this is 10 logarithm base 10 this is power ok so the convenience of using uh, db is that you don't have to specify if you are talking about voltages or power having said that normalized quantity uh, in, a radio, in radio theory and in propagation in particular. Uh, let me just tell you the, uh, the most common ones. For example, if you say 
just for your, you can check out these numbers. If you say 20 GB microvolt per meter, this is a dimensional quantity and this means 10 microvolt per meter. Or if you say 40 GB <coughs> microvolt per meter, this means 100 microvolt per meter, etc. So this act, when, when you write a dB like this, this is actually a dimensional number. But the difference is that here you don't have any, you just have dB, here you have dB with respect to some reference. Another quantity that you will all often find is dBm when we talk about power, and these are dB with respect to one milliwatt. Please note that in this case, if we say uh, what corresponds to 20 dBm, 20 dBm are 100 milliwatt. Please know that uh, due to the different definition, in one case, 20 dB is a factor of 10, and in another case, 20 dB is a factor of 100. Different definition. So 30 dB <coughs> is one part. That's it. I will express, uh, I will discuss more of those quantities when we meet them in due course. Okay, questions so far? Are those things that you are very familiar with? Or you see those things for the first time now? Question. Okay, but would we use them to the course, so I think you will have time to familiarize. If something is not clear, I can ex explain it again or using different words. How is my English? Can you follow me? Yes. 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 Okay, let's retrieve some basic concepts <coughs> from the electromagnetic field theory. I will not go into details, but just to, we have to have some common background. Magnetic theory. You take the Maxwell equation, uh, do a lot of work on them, uh, use wet, and you end up with the so called Helmholtz, this is an H, Helmholtz equation that is the following. operator is a uh, partial derivative but we are not really interested in to go into going into the details of those equations those are differential equations those differential equations must be integrated and when you solve those equations you find all the possible solutions 
for electromagnetic waves. So the Helmholtz equation is also called the wave equation because it contains all possible electromagnetic waves that can exist. Now, what are those quantities? Those quantities are two vector fields. One is the electric field. And H is the magnetic field. Those are uh, the, the quantities that we are interested in. Because the combination of the two, now I don't go into the details, but the combination of the two is the so-called electromagnetic field. So when you have under certain condition, combination of the electric and magnetic field is so-called electromagnetic field and we are very interested in this because the electromagnetic fields carry energy from one point to another without the need for the medium in between. This, you can transfer energy from one point to another even in vacuum. And we use this energy to carry information. We apply information to the electromagnetic field, uh, technically we modulate it, we modulate the electromagnetic field, and we let this information travel in space from the source, from the transmitter, to the receiver. Now, when we calculate, when we want to evaluate how the how speed propagates in space, we have to take into account one very important thing. Otherwise, we will make wrong calculations. The electric and magnetic fields are both vector fields. And this is very important when you will have to do your calculations. Let me <coughs> we find uh, in the electromagnetic theory two different fields: vector field <coughs> and scalar fields. <coughs> God bless. They are very different because it's very different the way you combine multiple sources. Let me uh, let me be more precise. Scalar fields. I will I will explain what the difference is uh, uh, with a non-electromagnetic uh, example. Scalar fields, they, let's start with scalar fields that are simple. <coughs> scalar fields, they associate to each point in space. A number. For example, if we take this room and we measure the temperature, in this room. The temperature in this room will be a scalar field because to each point in space we associate a slightly different value of temperature. Or even the same, but we, we associate to a uh, coordinate, a three-dimensional point, a number that is the temperature. 
this is the scalar field. Scalar fields are very easy because when you have to sum up two scalar fields, you just sum up the numbers in the same point. And you are, and you are happy. Vector fields, like the one that we are interested in, are more complex because they associate <coughs> to each point in space a vector. <laughs> That is three numbers, not one. Three numbers. And you have to sum up those three numbers separately. Let me explain this talking about this room again. If you take, if you consider every single point in this room, and you think, and you want to describe how the hair is circulating into this room to each point of the space in space you associate a vector that is you take one point and you say okay my hair is flowing in this direction in this point and to the end the length the size of the vector is proportional to the velocity and you need three numbers to describe this, this vector because you need three coordinates, the three uh, dimensions of this vector what is different from the scalar fields is that when you have to sum up vectors you cannot just sum up the number the, the single numbers, but you have to take count, take into account the direction of the vectors. So for example, in this situation, if you sum up those two vectors, the result will be <coughs> 1. If you sum up those two vectors, the result will be this one. <coughs> Uh, this makes our life quite complicated because uh, when we have uh, multiple electric fields reaching into a point, if we want to know what is the total electric field, we have to take into account the direction of the vectors of the electric field and their phases. I'm telling this because this is one of the most common errors, mistakes, that students do when calculate electric fields. They just sum up the numbers without taking into account the direction. So you have been warned. <coughs> Questions? Okay. Let's go back to this equation. Okay, uh, electric fields, just to become familiar with the technology, dimensions, all those numbers, all those quantities are dimensional. So the dimension of the electric field is volt per meter, or microvolt per meter, or millivolt per meter, whatever you want, but if we use the, M, uh, the, the standard system, is volt divided by e. Magnetic field, ampere per meter. In this equation, this uh, coefficient, gamma, that, that appears in that equation, is the uh, propagation, is the so-called propagation constant. <coughs> and if you do the calculation, that's the expression of the propagation constant. Uh, 
uh, don't worry, it's not that bad. Everything that appears in this uh, under this root, the square root, uh, depend all those parameters describe the medium in which the electromagnetic wave propagation, uh, propagates. So the angular frequency <coughs> omega is <coughs> 2p time the frequency f is the frequency we already defined well, zero is the so called magnetic permeability of the medium expression for vacuum. We, we usually deal uh, with non-magnetic materials in our course. It's very, very rare to find something that behaves differently from vacuum as far as the magnetic field is concerned. There may be one example, maybe. And this is Henry per meter, 14, 10 to the minus 7, Henry per meter. Love the dimensions. Sigma is the conductivity of the medium. Conductivity, and this is this can be different, obviously, from vacuum. And the dimensions are Siemens by by.